Our first guest uh, digs deep into this Ripple decision, um, saying that the only thing that the Ripple's Labs SEC ruling guarantees is continued uncertainty in the crypto markets, an uncertainty that only Congress can correct. Joining us now to discuss is Brown Rennick's Digital Commerce Group corporate partner, Preston Byrne. Hi, Preston. Um, good to have this perspective. So, um, okay, like on the surface, for those who aren't paying that much of attention, which is probably actually most of the world, but anyway, for both of you who are not paying that much attention to this case, <laughs> um, you know, it does look like there's some clarity here, right? It says, okay, so, you know, um, institutional sales, okay, that broke securities, that violated securities law, but, you know, programmatic sales or kind of, you know, sales to retail investors, um, uh, did not. So, I mean, I guess like on the surface, right, isn't that some sort of clarity or some sort of certainty? Why do you argue that this is just throwing things into further disarray? Well, the problem isn't that the decision provides certainty for you know, Ripple in this particular litigation, and it doesn't, I don't think. It's a, it's a very, it's an inferior court decision, uh, you know, from a district court. Inferior is not a, not a pejorative. It's just referring to the fact that it's a first instance court. And it's in variance with the precedence that we've seen to date, or for, rather for the last 70 years about Howie. So I think the, the reason that there's uncertainty is because this court has now ruled rather differently than everyone expected it to, based on you know, 70, 80 years of precedent after the Howey decision, which governs this area. So as a consequence, right, you can't really be sure what where you stand in the United States. I think some issuers are going to make the decision to proceed, where perhaps they shouldn't, uh, and other companies that might wish to proceed uh, if they had a better regulatory regime, for example, that in the United Kingdom or Europe, which provided a, a degree of certainty over the, the regulatory treatment of their tokens, uh, may not. So, I mean, th basically, entrepreneurs are going to be rolling the dice if they want to do business in the United States. I think more are going to decide to roll the dice after this decision, but they shouldn't have to roll the dice, right? Congress should just facilitate this activity by providing a, a certain regime. Okay, so just to be clear, just to make sure we understand what you're arguing here. So you're arguing that the uncertainty stems from the fact, basically, that this was just sort of like one court decision, like just the way that the decision was made, not necessarily that the decision itself made by the court was unclear. Is that is that a correct assessment? Because like, it seems like the court was saying pretty clearly, you know, they broke it down pretty clearly. But you're saying you're kind of more critical here of just like the process in which this decision was made, because another court could theoretically make a different decision. Is that a correct right. summation? <laughs> The decision was clear. The question is whether the decision is right. Um, so right, it, right. it bears mentioning that Ripple lost. Uh, there were three limbs of the case, right? There were sales to institutional investors. There were sales via exchanges, so-called programmatic sales, and other distributions to employees for compensation. And so Ripple lost on the sales to institutional investors. Uh, that was found to be an investment contract under U.S. law and therefore the sale of a security. The question then turns to why that is an investment contract, but these other distributions to investors via cryptocurrency exchanges to retail investors shouldn't be treated like investment contracts. And so the idea that you're going to have one set of transactions to sophisticated VCs, which is treated like an investment contract in, in relation to which the buyers benefit from the full protection of the securities laws, and another set of transactions where you have employees and retail investors who are receiving these securities, but they don't get the full protection of the securities laws. Um, most people who practice securities law see that as being somewhat uh, incompatible and inconsistent. Uh, the judge had her reasoning for doing that. Um, in each case, she basically, she, she examined the Howey rules. There are, there are three limbs that need to be satisfied. And in the latter two cases, with the programmatic sales and the distributions to employees, she said that one of those legs was not present in each case. Whether you agree with her or not is uh, you know, is a matter of, of spirit, quite spirited debate in the crypto lawyer telegram channels. Uh, but uh, but the, the fact is, it is somewhat at variance with what everybody expected. Um of course, what does Congress have to do? And short of that, uh, what what can we expect from the circuits, uh, Second Circuit? Because it, this, of course, will be appealed to the Second Circuit, most likely. We don't know who's going to do the appeal. Is it going to be the SEC or is it going to be Ripple? Uh, what can we expect out of the Second Circuit based on previous rulings, et cetera? Uh, and, and how does that change the game? Because, of course, as you mentioned, this was a this was Southern District of New York. Um, there are different districts would have different rulings had, had uh, that been the case, uh, but that's what we got. Now it goes to the Second Circuit. What can we expect out of that? And what should Congress do? We have a Congressman Torres coming up. What should he do? What should he push for? 
Sure. So we'll start with the second question and then go back to the first. Uh, in terms of the Second Circuit, I don't think we should expect anything for a long time. Uh, appeals take forever. In this instance, Ripple uh, Ripple may decide to go to trial, uh, and the SEC may decide to go to trial on certain outstanding issues which weren't resolved. Uh, that's chiefly the aider and a better liability for Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. Um, or they may they may have just appeal the whole case, right? Both sides might appeal, decide it's it's worth their while, and the judge might approve it and might go up. But anyway, that's going to take time, at least probably a year. So in the meantime, you know, we've got to ask ourselves, well, what's the situation? And that's the situation with uncertainty. In terms of what Congress needs to do, it's pretty clear that crypto isn't a security in the traditional sense, right? As a commercial matter, right? It might be regulated like a security. People might interact with it like they do with certain securities, but there are characteristics about the the, the asset, right? The self sovereign nature of it, the fact that it's custodied you know, by people on their own, the fact that people spend it in applications which provide useful software or useful services such as Helium with Wi-Fi and things like that. So it's really not something which is in the nature of a security. We need a legal regime that recognizes that while also providing enhanced protections for investors, such as regulation of financial promotions and regulation of disclosures by issuers. So without necessarily taking crypto and then shoehorning it into a securities regime, which requires you to have a transfer agent, you know, it can only be sold or, or traded on an ATS, a broker dealer has to be in the loop, and, and there are lockups and transfer restrictions. So basically the existing securities regime is made for securities. It's not made for crypto. We need a regime which is made for crypto, which provides investor protections, not one which is made for equity or bonds and provides investor protections. All right, Preston, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining the show this morning. Thank you. That was Brown Rudnick's Digital Commerce Group corporate partner, Preston Byrne.